So, all right, let me start the timer and uh, I'll have 20 minutes to do this question. And uh, I think I look, <laughs> when I looked ahead, it wasn't one of the more difficult questions. I think I've already done the most difficult question, which is the uh, uh, spool of string. Um, I, it's not so difficult uh, as um, I always confuse myself with, you know, how much work is done pulling the string and, um, and all that stuff. So <laughs> I've already done that. I'm not doing that this time. So, okay, let me start. And I think this is a this is a question from Portable TA. So back when we used to have midterm exams, one of the promise to my students is, hey, one of the questions is gonna be from Portable TA. Use that to study. Um, so, anyways, uh, so let me work through. And if you want, uh, you can compare my answer with the answer you see in the Portable TA. Uh, so okay, it says consider yo yo with a very light string wrapped around. We do some radius there, okay. Yo yo is approximately a solid disk. That'll be important because that determines what kind of uh, rotational inertia formula I use. And just as a reminder, rotational inertia, f I mean, I guess it's open book. So if you are using textbook, great, that's fine. Um, no restrictions there. And in the past, when I didn't used to have open book stuff, I still gave people the, um, this uh, table. So in the moment of inertia section 10.4 there's a table of moment of inertia and that's the kind of information that i don't really require or expect people to have memorized i do have happen to have uh, memorized some of these just by using them so much but um like a table of formulas like this is something that you should uh, expect to have access to in your normal work academic and professional and um that's fine um so solid disk means the rotation inertia will be mass of the disk times r squared divided by two. Uh, treat the material move as negligible. Good. Somebody holds the end of the string motionless. Good. So I think energy will be conserved. Release it from rest. You your false and rotate. Okay. Uh, for attached to work, draw a free body diagram. Okay. So I'm gonna draw a free body diagram of yo yo as it falls. So. Um, so I'll have some representation of the physical extent of the yo-yo. So the outside disk and the inner ridge. So as it falls, I think it will have only two forces on it. The first is the force that's always there, gravity. I'm going to treat that as acting at the center of mass of the yo-yo. And there's going to be tension force that will be acting where the string attaches to the yo-yo. This will be the tension force. And I think that's it. Um, to briefly describe. Okay. So there are two forces on the yo-yo. Uh, the downward force of gravity mg acting at the center of a mass of yo-yo. Um, Geometric, uh, same as a geometric center um, for uniform disk. And the uh, upward uh, force of tension T acting at the point where the string touches yo yo. Good. What is the tension in the string as the yo-yo falls down? Express your answer in terms of, okay. So this is a standard strategy question because, um, well, it's asking us about force. And uh, if it's asking about force, it's a good chance that we'll need to do a force analysis. Uh, if you are creative, sometimes there's a way to use other methods like a conservation of energy or sometimes even momentum to kind of first to work out energy and then work backward. Let me keep it simple, use a standard strategy. So I already drew a free body diagram and I should be defining my axis. And with the rotation, when you're defining axis, you're actually thinking about two things. One is the, you know, regular kind of X, Y, and axis. The other thing to consider is because you're going to be calculating torque, you should think about your center of rotation. Here, I think I'm gonna keep it simple. This will be my center of rotation. I'll say clockwise, clockwise is positive, counterclockwise is negative. That's how I'll do it. And I need to break down forces into components. Don't need to here because everything's already along the y direction. 
So finally, I need to write down my net force equation and net torque equation. So net force, um, upward and down. So let me call down positive because uh, my acceleration will be downward. Um, so, oh, so technically I should have labeled the downward as X, but I, I don't really need to deal with the X and Y distinctly. So I'll just uh, uh, <laughs> wing it. Uh, so net force downward being positive is going to be MG minus tension is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, that's one. Net torque is equal to, um, I write down all the torque terms. I have the lever arm for the tension. Oh, so I should have this distance labeled. I think of in the question description that said that was R over four. This part might be randomly generated. This factor four, uh, I probably randomized it. <laughs> so, um, so that's the lever arm for the tension force, R over four times the tension force, plus, um, now gravitational force might have had a lever arm if uh, I didn't define my center of rotation to be here. That's actually the reason, one of the reasons I defined it there. So gravity provides a zero torque. That should equal rotational inertia times angular acceleration. And if I want, I can even uh, put in what rotational inertia is. That's uh, mR squared over two for the solid disk times alpha. So this is the end of the standard strategy. And before you start doing any algebra, you should do this check. You should do this check of, are my system of equations solvable? So I have one, two equations. So it's a question of, do I have only two unknowns or more? And counting, I don't know tension, I don't know acceleration, I don't know angular acceleration, and um, and uh, am I given the mass? Uh, yeah, I guess I'm given the mass. So, so yeah, that's, uh, uh, I have three unknowns, two equations, which means I'm missing some piece of information that I need to actually be able to solve it. And as you think about it, I hope you eventually come across that um, something called rolling without sleeping. And I think the question even gives you some hint to the effect. Uh, somebody holds, oh, or maybe not. So they don't tell you that the string doesn't slide against the yo-yo, but that feels like a natural assumption to make. So I'm going to make that assumption, uh, which means as this yo-yo uh, rolls down, uh, that will be like a rolling without sleeping in the sense that the amount of string that gets a pulled out of the yo-yo, there's a correspondence to that and the angular distance that it rolls down. So all of that to say, I can relate this angular acceleration to this acceleration. Uh, acceleration is going to be that radius of that circle, r over four times the angular acceleration. That's my equation three. So now I have three equations, three unknowns. I should be able to solve it. Since in this question, my interest is in the tension, uh, let me do this. I'm going to systematically eliminate alpha and A. That will hopefully uh, end up with one equation in terms of tension, and I can solve for it. So let me do this. Um, since I have an expression already solved for acceleration, let's plug this into one to eliminate acceleration from my expressions. So this is coming from one and three. You end up with uh, um, uh, what I'm going to call one B mg minus T is equal to M times R over four alpha. Let me write down equation two again for just comparison and kind of thinking through what to do next. The lever arm times the tension force is equal to mr squared over 2 alpha. And be careful with the difference between the lever arm distance here, which is tied to um, this uh, radius of the inner reach, uh, where the, the torque will be generated, with the radius here. So the radius here is the radius of the entire yo-yo. 
because um, we are dealing with a solid disk of radius r. That's for the re rotational inertia. Make sure none of those confuse you. Okay, so I think yes, I need to eliminate uh, alpha. So let me do it this way. I'm gonna solve the simpler equation for alpha. When I do that, I get alpha is equal to, I'm gonna just do the algebra in my head. Um, or let me do some cancellation here. R cancels one factor there. This cancels one, well, two to get down to two. So one half T is equal to MR alpha. So now solving that I get T force divided by two times mass times R is equal to alpha. And I think I do get the right unit, a uh, one over second squared. So um, yeah, because T is kilogram meter per second squared. So, so now I can plug in this alpha into equation 1b to get this. So I get equation 1b and equation, uh, I guess this is technically 2b, 2b. Then I end up with mg minus t is equal to mr over 4 times t over 2. M R. So um, I have to collect the like terms. Uh, uh, let me cancel the things that cancel because actually this M cancels with the dead M. Um, dead M I think it stays there. This R cancels with the dead R. So I have T over 8. Yeah, okay. That which has, okay, so let me write that out. Right hand side is actually equal to T over 8. Okay, then let me uh, collect the like terms. Collecting like terms, I move this minus T over. So on the right hand side, which I'm going to write on the left, I have 1 plus 1 over 8 times t. On the left hand side, which I'm going to write on the right, is equal to mg. Now I can solve for t is equal to mg divided by that, uh, which um, doing the fraction simplification in my head is 8 over 9. So t is equal to 8 over 9 mg. That feels right that at least that's the correct unit. And one thing that makes me feel comfortable is if the yo-yo wasn't falling down, T would have equal to mg. Yo-yo is accelerating down. T is slightly less than mg. I think that makes sense to me. So, so right. Uh, so tension in the string is going to be equal to m times g, uh, g times 8 divided by 9. Um, and the rest is in the attached work. All right, yeah, so I didn't, uh, oh wait, I didn't need a G, capital M. Uh, I, I didn't need M and uh, it should be capital M. So yeah, I, I guess, uh, so I don't need R, huh? Could be surprising. <laughs> um, I, I think it is a factor of eight over nine probably depends on the inner region being a quarter R. So, okay, after the yo-yo falls down distance H, how fast is it falling and rotating? Oh. Uh, Okay, it feels like I actually have to finish solving for alpha and A. So let's do that. Um, so for part C, I'm going to just continue on with what I was doing in B and actually solve for alpha. Uh, I'm a little hesitant to use T to directly to get um, like the, how, ang the angular velocity and uh, the velocity because um, when I calculate work and do it that way, I've made the mistakes in the past. So, okay, alpha is equal to, uh, let me just write this out, 8 over 9 times mg divided by 2mr. So, some things cancel, masses cancel. 2 cancels a factor of 2 there for 4 9. So, that's uh, equal to uh, 4 over 9g over r. And I think the units are right. And with that being alpha, the, so A is equal to the radius, R over 4, times the uh, the angular acceleration. So let me write that out, R over 4 times angular acceleration, 4 ninth G over R. Okay, 4's cancel, R's cancel, so I get the acceleration of uh, G over 9. Okay. So how fast is it falling and rotating? So I think, let me do it this way. Acceleration is equal to g over 9. And angular acceleration is equal to 
4 9 times uh, g over r. Um, I see you attach the work. Uh, since uh, it's a constant acceleration from uh, kinematics formulas, uh, I think I'm going to use the v squared formula. I can say uh, v final squared minus v initial squared is equal to 2 times uh, acceleration times the distance um, h. So I can solve this for vf. Um, and uh, vf is equal to square root of, v initial was 0. Uh, so I have 2 times the acceleration, um, g over 9, times the height, h. So that should be the final speed. That being the final speed, omega final will be this thing divided by r over 4. So it'll be, uh, well, let me write it this way. Uh, 4 over r times the square root of 2 times g times uh, g divide by, oh, wait, I gotta be careful here, uh, 9 times, divide by 9 times h. So I think uh, that's it. Um, wait, did I miswrite it? Yeah, sorry, uh, I wrote it wrong. This is why, so g over 9, that's the acceleration, and h does actually multiply. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, I think that's all good. So I have, uh, uh, so there that's a meter square per second squared. Squared is good. Here I have um, meter squared per second squared. Um, square root is so meter per second. And I'm going to be dividing by R, so I'll get one over second. Yeah, I think that's all good. Um, how much time do I have? I have two minutes okay so i think that's enough time to attach work so let me attach work so starting with the a uh, let me just grab as much as i can here and of the part b i'm doing that and finally part c All right, so uh, let me submit that end. And uh, oh, I guess um, in the mode I'm in, there's um, I can't quite uh, check if <laughs> I made any mistakes in the answer. Uh, let me do this. I I'm pretty sure I didn't make any mistake, but just to be doubly sure, let me go into my open math as instructor and figure out. Um, and show up the answer key and compare it side by side with the answers that test student got. All right, so this is the attempt that test student made. Um, I can change the scores if uh, things weren't, but mainly what I'm interested in is the answer key. So answer key, yeah, shows those two forces. That's it. Uh, tension in the string. Let's hope it's an 8 9th mg. Let's see if that's wrong. Oh, I need to click evaluate. Um, okay, 8, 9th mg, good. <laughs> and then, um, how fast is it falling in with the 8, 9th mg? A square root of uh, 2 over 9gh. Square root of 2 over 9gh, good. And uh, omega is uh, if you are absorbing this, that will be 4 times 4, uh, 16 times 2 is 32, um, 32 over 9 times gh over, uh, yeah, r squared, bringing that in, it becomes r squared. All right, so I think I did it all right. Uh, uh, I guess I must have done, oh, <laughs> yeah, so what the answer key does, that's the longer way to do it. What I did when I'm actually in the time under the time limit that's the correct way to do it, in the sense that it's going to be the quickest. And um, it doesn't involve any potential confusion in physical concepts.